Hello everyone, welcome back to the Ignite series. As you can see, these are the results from this race. This, ha this race actually had a pretty high strength of field, I think it was 2500 or around there, 2515 or something. I think the race went pretty good, so I guess I'll go ahead and show you guys my qualifying lap. Okay, so there you go. That was a 15.987. So that landed me 7th. I think that was a good position to start out on. I noticed in the Ignite series, in the farther back is where the wrecks tend to happen. In most races, I'll try and qualify in the back because the guys up front are too aggressive, but in the Ignite series so far, it seems like the guys up front are really the guys who know what they're doing. Okay, so to the start of a 40 lap race. Now this is, I decided in my first episode, I was actually showing you guys all three of the races. Um, I noticed like there isn't really that much happening in all three races, so I decided that I'll just show you guys the race that has the most action. That's why I'm shortening these videos a lot more. So in the beginning of this race, I didn't really get a good good run at all because my internet was actually really, really glitchy. So I was busy trying to get that fixed and I forgot that the green flag was about to fly. And so I got, I lost a lot of positions and my, my start wasn't that good at all. So of course now I'm behind these slower guys, I have to pass him. Going around the outside here actually seems to be pretty good. Down the inside you get a lot of a lot of uh, turning speed, but the outside here just gives you a whole ton of run and speed down the straightaways. Those two guys up front there, that white and black car and the black car in front of them, they keep wheel rubbing. So here you have to be very cautious that they're not going to wreck. I don't think they wrecked, but you always got to be cautious. That's one of the hard things in this series. Three wide here doesn't work though, that's one thing I learned. You can't go three wide no matter what you do here. The guy at the top will just get squeezed out because he can't uh, get on the gas up there. Really the passing lane is the inside even after 40 laps because the tires don't wear down too much. So this is about the time when we finally get in the groove, like you're doing just consistent lap after lap. Really I needed to get ahead of these three guys up front of me. The problem was they were already fighting and you can't really wedge your way in there. You have to be very, uh, you have to plan a lot in advance. You can see that guy up ahead already rubbed his wheel a whole lot, so it's pretty he's pretty damaged. One thing I noticed is these cars don't really get any they don't really have that much aero, which you could probably tell. So no matter how much damage you got, unless you have engine damage, it doesn't really slow you down.
So at this point we're all single filed, there really isn't that much competition anymore, we're just all trying to be as fast and consistent as we can. I also got my internet fixed so that wasn't happening to me. So at this point we are in 10th position and it's lap 15 so I'm gonna go ahead and skip to the action okay so right here you can see those two guys up front the 13 looks like he just self spun and so he wrecks the guy behind him and he loses positions that gets us up to 8th position and then the lapped car up there goes high to let us by and now it's just me versus this five, I believe. Yeah. From this point on, I don't think I gained any more positions. The thing here is your speed really is you gotta roll it through the corner and then get on the gas as early as possible to bring it up to the wall. The problem is, you c it's kind of like a blind turn, so you can't really see when to get on the gas as, as easy as it would be at other tracks. So it's really easy to come up and hit the wall. So really, I just was toning it down, that's why I wasn't really up front. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure I could have been in the top five on this one, because I was. this is like my best track. I'm looking forward to the road course, though, because usually I'm really good at those. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and skip to the action. So here I just hit the wall like I was talking about. You can see if I go into the cockpit view. See if I can get it. Where is it? Gyro. Let's try the gyro here. So I try and get on the gas a little bit earlier. The problem is you really can't see the turn. And so until you get there, you really don't know if you're going to hit the wall or not. I should have just lifted, but I was overconfident, I guess. Fortunately, like I was saying, Legends cars don't have that much problems with damage, so I didn't really lose my pace. It just meant that I had to pay more attention now because the guy behind me was catching up. Another thing is when you're behind these cars, it seems like they have a... not a lot of draft, but it's a good amount of draft. And it's really easy to... when you're behind someone, at least at this track, it's really easy to see where you're messing up. And so you can past the person or get you can learn to be faster if you stay behind someone so from this point on I couldn't really gain any positions because the guy ahead was pretty much my pace he wasn't making any mistakes he was too far away so I couldn't catch up to him and the lapped cars were moving out of the way so there wasn't really any any issues So last lap. So this wasn't really the most exciting race. It was really just about consistency. I know I could have done better, but I'm looking forward to the Charlotte Legends Road Course. I know that's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you guys will I hope you guys can give me suggestions on how I can improve these videos. So thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.